Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to this special episode of Smile to Jannah. So after my two videos about the Ahmadiyya group, which is a deviant cult that believes that a man from India was a prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was also a messiah and a number of other things. So on Saturday evening, I was on my Instagram live chatting with you guys, minding my own business until a bunch of Guardiani trolls decided to crash the party. They started giving it all that. So I thought, you know what? Let me add you guys on and let's speak face to face. Naturally, they lost their nerve, bottled it, whatever you want to call it. One of them, however, did manage to accept my request. But to be honest, after speaking to him for a few minutes, it was clear that he should have just taken some <laughs> should have just taken some paracetamol and had an early night. You're saying I'm waffling, yeah? So you tell me how I'm waffling and then I can respond to that. Because you made a claim, isn't it? So let's deal with that claim first. Uh, I'm going to go off the line. I'm going to go off the line and we'll let a real brother talk to you and uh, get you're not a real brother, you're a fake, yeah? You're artificial intelligence. Are you a hologram? Thereafter, they kept putting this one name forward, yeah? A bunch of them said, look, debate this person, mate. He's the guy. Debate him, debate him. I tried adding him once, it didn't go through. They said, add him again, mate, add him again. Constantly, add him, add him. So I was like, this guy must be the elite. Yeah, this guy must be the boss that you face at the end of the level. We started off the conversation. At the start, we were just kind of getting used to the waters. Once we got settled in, Here's what transpired. Douche. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and honestly and truthfully, the ulama at that time, you know, the, the Sunni shuyukh at that time, they yeah. themselves acknowledged that no one can stand up to Christianity the way Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Islam can. No one. They you acknowledge would, that? Uh, you, all of your... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. You know, Batalvi Sahib, Batalvi Sahib, who was the biggest opponent of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Islam, in 1982, when Barahin al Ahmadiyya, the first book written in the defense of Islam, came out, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad wrote that book. He said, Never has a book such as this to this. Bro, Batal, who, who's Batalvi Saab? Oh. Come on, bro. I mean, do you know Khan Saab? This is do you know Khan Saab? Which Khan Saab are we talking about? You know the main Khan Saab of the time. Which Khan Saab? He said the contrary to that. Muhammad Hussein Batalvi is the guy I'm talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. Which I don't know who you're talking about. Who's Batalvi? Muhammad Hussein Batalvi was one of the most prominent Sunni shuyukh at that time. And he acknowledged that Mirza yeah. Ghulam Ahmad al -Islam, the book. So was, what? what I'm saying is that the people at the time realized this manner, this, this individual has... Oh, bro, bro. Okay, okay. The, okay. Don't say people of the time. Say person of the time. Because that's one individual you've told me. And, you know... Kudos okay. to Batalvi and whoever he was. You know, I, I don't know him, so I can't okay. comment on him. But well, just because you quoted one individual okay. to me, my bro, you can't okay. then extrapolate that to okay. people. You know what I'm saying? Do you know Abul Kalam Azad? Mulana Abul Kalam yes. Azad. Okay, right. he, he wrote that the literature that the Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam has with regards to Tawheed cannot be found in anyone else's writings. Never. That Tawheed, that the literature. Bro, but how can you talk about Tawheed? When, yeah. okay, how do you define Tawheed? The oneness of Allah. And I know you're going to bring up that quote. Oh, he said he's the Ibn Allah. Na'udhu billah min Do you know who, this is the same, the same thing. Bro, I'm just going to pause you there. You're glitching, yeah? Yes. Bro, Go you're ahead. glitching and I'm not, I'm not pressing anything. I'm just telling you that you're glitching at the moment. Because if something happens to this connection, right. then people are going to start blaming me. Yeah. So I'm not touching no, no, the no. connection. I'm just telling you you're glitching, yeah? Understood, understood. Okay, so yeah, tell me about the, the context of that verse then, about where you know what I was going to say. Abul Kalam Azad, right? He talks himself, he says that no one has written better Tawheed about Tawheed than this individual, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam. Okay? And then Allama, um, who's the famous uh, Sha'ir? I'm told, Allama Iqbal. Iqbal. You've heard of Iqbal. He said that if you want to see the true Islam being practiced, then go to Qadian. I mean, I've seen Iqbal on, yeah, go on. So, so why is he saying these things? Why are these ulama acknowledging that, okay, there's something happening here, right? Why, why, if you want to see Islam practiced in real life, then go to Qadian. If you want... No, the thing is, okay, you, you've made a point. That the point is that people have praised him, yeah? Now, an, an individual, when he does something, yeah, 
Now, if he does something, you can praise that particular action. That doesn't necessarily mean that every single teaching about that individual is now rendered correct. That's I, a logical I, fallacy. Yeah, you I can't agree. extrapolate that because that's a slippery slope argument. Yeah, what you need to do is you say, okay, in that particular aspect, yes, that person may have praised that individual. I mean, Abdul Kalam Azad, I'd, I would have to look at his entire speech and see the context of that. Was he going on, you know, a, a peace finders mission? Were, were there kind of persecutions happening at that time? Were, was he trying to bring them together? I mean, there's entire context behind that. And that's why it's interesting. I mean, you're mentioning that, but you were going to correct the context where um, Mirza Qadiani said about him seeing a vision about him being God. Um, you, you're going to uh, elucidate me on that. I can, and I can do that, and we, we have to read the whole context as well. And listen, Go for it. do you know, okay, you've heard of Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, I'm sure you have, right? Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. Right? Okay, bro, I'm, I'm just going to give you a slight pause and and say, let's not go with the no, uh, argument that, okay, this is correct because that also happened, and because that also happened, I'm, therefore this is a ren a rendered correct. Let's, let's deal with this quote, yeah? I'm drawing a parallel, right? Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. Bro, the parallel, this is a logical fallacy to prove okay. your thing to be correct. Just because you can give it's, me another example of something, that doesn't necessitate it to be correct. And that was one of the issues I had with that one hour uh, response, which was, oh, they're saying this. Well, this also exists. Therefore, what we have said is so, correct. It's number one, it's a vision, okay? It's a vision. It's a, it's a spiritual event. It's not a physical event. Number one, you cannot become physically Allah, right? No, I didn't say uh, I didn't say it was a physical thing. I, I did mention vision or dream. Do you remember right. that, bro, from the video, yeah? I, I honestly didn't watch the whole thing, so I don't know. But I know what you're, you're quoting from oh. the tech. You had those snippets up. I, I watched that. So, you know, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, had similar fatawa of kufr laid on him for similar allegations that, oh, he said that I'm Allah. Or Mansur al-Haq Baghdadi, who was killed for saying, Ana al-Haq or Ana al-Mawjood, for saying these Sufi-istic things, right? And this is, this is what's happened in the past to ulama of Islam. When people do not understand the visions or the, the spiritual events that, that those individuals went through. And that's that's nothing you cannot attack is someone someone's spiritual vision and if Allah is showing himself that you, you can't have... attack it you're, you're right bro I'm gonna give you kudos there but you can criticize it as not being in accordance with Sharia a person's vision cannot be made into Sharia that's a very important principle to have a person can be you know spiritual but once that spirituality it... contradicts the precepts of Sharia that which... spirituality is which... we can no longer accept it sorry which one are we, what Sharia um, concept are we going against in there? We're going uh, against the one that you just mentioned. When a person is making certain uh, things that can be interpreted as shirk, then, I mean, that's a very slippery slope, to be honest. But let's get back to the point where you're telling me about this vision. Okay, we, you seem to be telling me about this, um, the, the fallacy that, oh, so-and-so did it. Therefore, I mean, let's, let's stop the parallels for now. So just give me the context of the vision. Uh, and then we'll go on from there because you said I didn't get the context. So just give me the context. I'll, I'll let you speak. It's the vision. Sorry. The vision. It's a vision. And Allah is showing Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al-Islam that the level, the degree of ita'ah that he has reached is commendable to the, to the level where he, his wujud, you know, that's the, that's the thing where Sufism kind of, where people do not understand Sufism. His wujud is gone, right? فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى You maybe, you, أنت تتحدث العربية أم لا؟ تحكي عربي؟ لا okay. So, باللغة العربية في سورة النجم, right? فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى That the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in his vision reached a level to Allah where there was no difference left between بشرية and إلهية, right? فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى The two bows Man, okay, gonna... bro, that, that sounds very nice and kudos to your recitation, but just tell me why what in I'm that saying... vision Mirza claimed that he was God. That's, that... I still haven't got an answer to that, to be honest. He is saying that my wujud, my wujud is done, right? I don't have an anania. I don't have arrogance within me anymore. My purpose in life is whatever God has commanded me to do. 
right? I do not have my own will. I do not do this of my own will. I only do what Allah commands me to do. And there's these famous shuyukh of the past, Ibn Arabi, Abdul Qadir Jalani. Abdul Qadir Jalani, it is said that he said that he doesn't even wear new clothes. He doesn't even change his clothes until Allah tells him to change his clothes. So what's that got to do with, uh, I mean, you can't compare, that, compare somebody who is saying he doesn't change his clothes because Allah doesn't tell him to, and you're comparing him to somebody who claims that he was God in a vision. That's absurd, bro. What's, what's going on? He's jammed now. Sorry, okay, you still there? Are you back with us? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. What are, so you're, you're comparing exactly. somebody that changes clothes because he's been told by Allah to somebody no. who actually sees himself to be God in a vision. Bro, do you, I, you keep bringing these Sufi <laughs> sheikhs up. Sufi what, sheikhs okay. do not make our sharia you know, they are not authority for us let me make this point very clear bro because uh, yeah. you, you keep reiterating this you know, point and bringing give, these can I give you number one, one historical one figures that have praised sure. mirza qadiani does mm -hmm. not necessitate his aqidah to be correct and number two certain sufi shuyukh doing or saying certain things doesn't make and justify what mirza qadiani has said okay. to be correct in can fact, I, they can say there's many outlandish quotes of certain Sufis. Yeah, yeah? Sure. that does not now mean that what Mirza has now said in his books uh, is is uh, suddenly okay. Because I mean, you you're just comparing chalk and cheese, to be honest, and you just you're trying yeah. to force something can, to fit. Can I give you where one it point. just doesn't fit. Do you see what I'm saying? Can I give you, can I give you one point? Because in order to answer this right. Um, by the way, I appreciate this discussion. I wish we had just done this earlier before all of this. Anyway, uh, in oh, yeah, yeah. Bukhari, to be honest, I find it quite interesting as well, to be honest. Uh, yeah, go for in it. Bukhari, in Bukhari, we have a hadith. I draw nearer to my servant, right? As, you know, bin, bin nawafil, you know what nafal prayers are, right? Like nafal prayers and, and, and fasting. Yes, and prerogatory. Oh, man, sorry. Prayers, yeah. Hear me? Can yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yep, yep. So, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadith Qudsi in Bukhari, it says that I draw nearer to my servant, right? I draw nearer and nearer you keep to him, right? My bro. You keep glitching, Until, until I become, I, until I become the hands with which he, which with he, which he uses, until I become the mm -hmm. tongue in which he speaks, until I become okay. the limbs with which he walks. This is all, it's, you can, you can attack that hadith, Wahhabis can attack that hadith and say, look, this is, na'udhu billah, this is shirk, how could a human, how could Allah become a human, you know? And then there's also another hadith that says that in the akhirah, someone will ask, Allah will ask an individual, when oh, I came to... this hadith, I, I mean, there's, there's two distinctions I just want to make here, you, you can pause your thought, there's two distinctions I want to make here. Number one, you have Mirza Qadiani claiming that in the vision he was God. You're now equating that with the Hadith Qudsi, which is, is a direct saying of Allah. Now, Allah can say whatever he wants. Yeah, that's uh, we can't fault that in the slightest. But what and Mirza Qadiani says, we okay, can fault that, that because he's a human being. Okay. We can't fault revelation, my bro. And you're comparing revelation with the vision of Mirza Qadiani. I honestly, I'm, and, okay. I'm baffled you why know, this is even a comparison. Explain to me what Jesus is, and I know this is the Bible. Sorry, bro, I missed the start of that because you're glitching. Just repeat that. I, was bro, I can't hear you at all. You, you're literally frozen. Can you hear me? Bro, you've literally frozen. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I heard that bit, but again, it's okay. very blurry, my bro. Just, just Sorry, say a sentence. Let me see. If we, yeah, maybe go near your go internet router. Yeah, yeah. Let me go to this other room. One sec. Let me go to this other room. Can you? All right. Can you hear me better? It's it's better. It's better. Yeah. Where Allah says, Allah says, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. This is in Yawm al Qiyamah. I was hungry and you didn't feed me. You didn't give me food, you didn't give me water. Right? 
what does that mean? Allah is saying that He, man, it's a very bad connection. Bro, can you hear me though? Yeah, yeah, I can. Your screen keeps going on and off, on and off. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what's uh, what's going on with my internet, but uh, that's um, fine. That's fine. So you you mentioned two points. You said Hadith al Qudsi, and then you said you about attack. Allah saying He becomes this, He becomes that. Then you mentioned another thing again, my bro. This yeah. is Allah saying it. Now, if Allah says it, I'm sorry, I cannot entertain the equation now and equating it to a saying of Mirza seeing that he is God. I'm sorry, but those two cannot be equated in the slightest. Can you and as, as an academic, that's, that's not going to be accepted it's, in any uh, ac academic kind of debate or discussion, frankly. I mean, they're two totally different it's, things. It's One is brother. claiming to be a chosen Messiah and the other is God. Now, God, and what it, he says, how we understand what God says in Hadith or in the Quran, that is then told to us by the Prophet. The Prophet, first of all, is the first point of contact in doing the tafsir of that. Then we go to the Sahaba. Yeah, then we go to the Tabi'een, then the Taba Tabi'een. Yeah, now with Mirza Qadiani, his thing is him seeing a vision. Yeah, that he is God. So all I'm asking you is, can you tell me what that interpret? Because you said I got the context wrong. So you've given me the context that it was a vision. But then when you said you were going to give me the context, all you've in essence done is just told me, well, Allah says this in the Quran. Well, uh, Allah said this in the Hadith Qudsi. And what I'm saying what, is, yeah. yeah. What, okay, so number one, this is a vision, right? And number two, Abdul Qadir Jalani, and I've told you, Abdul Qadir Jalani saw his mother as God in a dream. Okay, this has happened in the past. These are visions. Number two, Isa alayhi salam himself was attacked for the same reason. He said, I and the father are one, which Christians do not understand. First of all, the Abdul Qadir Jilani one. Can you give me the reference for this? Sure, inshallah. Somebody else can post it. But these are visions that people have had within Islam in the past. Isa alayhi salam said, I and the father are one. Right? In essence, right? The, I'm sure he he's obviously not you give me a Bible literally. Quote, yeah? Of course, why not, man? And there's nothing wrong. And if I'm giving you shaykh. the Bible to be, I mean, we don't take that to be our rulings. We don't derive our Messiah from the Bible. I agree. If, if Isa says, I and the Father are one, are you going to attack him for that? No, he, we obviously understand what he means. I'm not by going that. to attack him, my bro. It's just something in the Bible. It's what the Christians believe. Like, that's it. If he said but, it in the Quran, if the quote he... was mentioned in the Quran, then our discussion would be more fruitful. But... Give me a quote. Sorry, bro. Am I frustrating you? No, no, no. That's fine. My, okay. my neck. I was just rolling my neck here. Uh, you're, you're okay, not... yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so just the point that I was trying to say was you gave me a quote from the Bible, which, yeah. um, I, I mean, I don't know who you've spoken to, but we don't take our Sharia or anything from the Bible. And, I'm yeah, just sorry? explaining to you people in the past were misunderstood for the same exact reasons, right? I, I named you Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani. I'm naming you Isa alayhi salam as well from the past ummas who have said similar okay. things. Okay, and, and that's interesting. Okay, you've given me three people. I'll, I'll respond Man, to you three. I thought I had done so already. So the Ibn Arabi and Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, it will be interesting to see the quote and sure. the authenticity of that. Sure. So that will be something that I, I'm interested in. And also number two, my bro, even if they had said that, that yeah. would be incorrect because there was a period in Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani's life where he did go overboard. And he had to correct himself. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I think it's people who do not understand the level of humility and the level of spiritual progress that that individual has made and the visions that that person experienced. And people from the outside are calling him kafir for no reason. That happened to Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, Shaykh al Islam, who is called a kafir for some of his visions that he's stating. This has happened in the past. And now you are here as well attacking a vision that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam. So it's a vision number one. Oh, let, let me just let me just pause you. Yeah? The people in the in the comments that are um, being rude and that I mean that's that's not how we're doing things. Yeah, so let's let's avoid that, please. I also want to give this disclaimer that you know what I mean, like me and this fellow individual, where we're having a discussion. This is this is what we should be doing. Yeah, we dialogue, we have discussions, but and all this name calling and stuff. I don't want to see these messages and name calling and. Violence is never the answer for, for, for anybody and I don't want anybody uh, giving messages like this 
I mean, you know, but, this is just absolutely and, unacceptable. Sorry, bro, you were saying? You know, and part of your video, it, it seemed like you were coming off. And for me, I only watched one minute of it because, of course, the one that was on TikTok, it seemed like you were coming off as a, you know, um, uh, do you know what the word istihza means? You, that's probably an Urdu word, right? Urdu mekatena istihza. Just clarify for the viewers. Istihza, to, you know, to, to, um, to mock, to, to ridicule, to... Uh, to make fun of, right? To, to be honest, um, my bro, like that, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like because the video, the first video was like eight minutes, and the second video was five minutes. Like the mm -hmm. clip that we post on other social media is supposed to get people interested in that. Um, I, I was very cautious. In fact, I chose my words very carefully as to Hazrat um, Google. Hazrat Google is. Uh... Is an interesting Hazrat Google, bro, is not is not disrespectful to Qadianis. Hazrat Google not, is a it's, it's a joke. It's it's and that's you know, and that's wa ma yatihim min rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un. That never does. Bro, joking with Google. I mean, that's whatever, that's a bit excessive. Like you know, what I'm you're saying, saying it came across as offensive. And no, no, Hazrat that, Google, that, it, come on, my bro. <laughs> You made a joke. It's fine. But my, yes, share Google. Is Hazrat Google, share Google. And I'll tell you why. I'll give you the background. Maybe you're unfamiliar with that. This is a term used even in academic circles because, and I'll tell you why, because a lot of the youngsters nowadays, before they even consult scholars, they first Google stuff. Yeah. And that's why certain people... Um, as as a as a joke, they say, oh, so you're going to go to share Google now or Hazrat Google. Yeah, and that's... Yeah, that's that's the context behind that. It's everyday vernacular from where we come from. I mean, I use that fairly frequently, to be honest. You know, but you seem, brother, I still don't know what your real name is. My name is Usama, by the way. Um, I wish you know we could just have a normal discussion like we've had. I've given you context. You brought up one allegation of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed al Islam disrespecting Isa al Islam. I'm giving you the context of that in John eleven five. You reference a very particular thing. I'm giving you a reference for what he was talking about. You've asked me why did he see himself as Allah in a vision or a dream. I'm giving you the reference for that as well. If you don't take it, that's not, you know, I can't make you understand. I can't make you be okay with it, right? I'm giving you the context of it. Other people will find, okay, yeah, that, that, that can happen. If we can continue this discussion, by the way, whatever allegations you have, we can just go on live. Whatever allegations you've brought up, we can talk about each one of them in a civil Discussion. To be fair, my bro, to be fair, the two allegations, excuse me, the two allegations that you said, the first one was about Isa al Islam being disrespected. Yeah. yeah. Now you said he hasn't been disrespected, uh, disrespected no. at all, no. um, which um, I don't agree with. And I mean, maybe uh, at the future date, I can um, explain why I don't agree with that. So sure. that hasn't, there's, there's no resolution to that at the moment. Okay. The other quote you said, um, so I, I gave you the, the Urdu thing Which you could have read out But unfortunately I think somebody said it was blurry as well Sorry can you hear me? I think you've just jammed again Sama can you hear me? Um, can we set up a better time So I can have my laptop open as well So we could just do a scheduled meet Instead of um, yeah, we could do. We'll just do an Instagram live tomorrow again around this time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good. And I'll have the quotes ready for you. Uh, brilliant. But, bro, yeah. please, like, Lao giving me quotes of Sufi people. Well, and why not? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why not. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Sure. Like, l l maybe, maybe I didn't explain the point yet. Like, as, as a believer, we have four main sources here yeah? the Quran, the Hadith. The Ijma and Qiyas, yeah. Dreams are not hujjat when it comes to rulings, yeah. They do not dictate our aqidah. They not they do not dic dictate our fiqhi rulings. Like dreams are there as basharat, and it's very nice, and they can be interpreted. And even the acts of certain people, um, like the, it's it's very nice, and we can take like virtue from it. However. When I say virtue, I mean like uh, encouragement. However, bro, we cannot take uh, belief. We cannot take precepts of our religion from them. Similarly, even with the quotes of individuals, bro, it's very nice. I mean, uh, it's like, I'm going to be honest, like even with the video that I did, I was hit a lot with, 
you took this out of context, you took that out of context, and this and that. So even these kind of um, one-liners about Mirza Qadiani, I'm pretty sure people did say good things about him, but that's not proof about his aqidah being correct, about his claims being correct, and it does not necessitate or justify him using those words. Because many prophets, in fact, I haven't come across a single prophet, because if we're dealing with somebody who claims to be a prophet or a messiah, we need to compare like with like. And if a prophet has never said, oh, in this dream, I saw I was God, yeah, and then I thought it was so. And bro, if you start bringing quotes of prophets saying that, then I'll be like, okay, now we're dealing like with like. But Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, and you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, when you come from here, sorry, sorry. You're very learned individual, so you know the hadith, ulama'u ummati ka'anbiya bani Israel, that the scholars, the ulama of my ummah are like the the anbiya of the past, umma umma bani Israel, that the anbiya of bani Israel are like the scholars of my ummah. So yes, you can say Abdul Qadir Jalani reached the level that maybe past anbiya reached, right? And Bro, that's in our aqidah, we don't the, even entertain that. No person, forget, forget prophet. Like, you cannot even reach the lowest of the companions. Like, after the companions, like, that's it. Radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. That's where it ends. Why did no individual, it doesn't matter how many hours you sit and you do muraqaba or you do dhikr, you can never even reach the lowest of the companions, let alone a prophet, my bro. So I think that's where, that's where the major differences are happening. And I think that's where, just, uh, I'll just finish, for, and that's where I think uh, I can now understand your point. Maybe that's why you're confused. Like, why isn't he accepting what I'm saying? It's because you think, or oh, maybe in your Aqidah, you can reach like yeah. the status of a prophet. But yeah. according to us, and I think here I, we're kind of understanding each other now, like we do not entertain the Aqidah in the slightest. Forget a prophet, my bro. Yeah, you cannot even reach the lowest levels of companions. Sure. So, you, yeah, you, I think we, that's the point yeah. I'm saying. I think yeah. that's why I keep saying like I'm confused. Like, why are you naming these Sufi think, shuyuk? I think, I think here, yeah. it's, I think it's important. Can we read one verse of the Quran? You know, and I'll read you. One, I'll read it for you. Right, Surah An-Nisa, chapter six, or chapter four, verse sixty-nine. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Wa man yuti Allah wa Rasul. Right, whoever obeys Allah and His Prophet, fa'ulaika ma'al ladina an'amahum an'ama an'amallahu alayhim min al-nabiyyin wa siddiqin. These are the four darajat that we have in this Muslim Ummah. Siddiq, Shaheed, Salih, and Nabi, right? And this is why we call Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu a Siddiq. Of course, we have Shuhada, we have Salihin, we have Siddiqin. Why don't we have Nabiyin? These are all four in Am. These are, this is what we pray for in Surah Al-Fatiha when we say, Oh Allah, grant us, you know, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطِ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ That give us, the, the, give us the path, take us on the path of those you bestowed blessings upon. What are these in'amat? The in'amat are mentioned in Surah An-Nisa, verse 69, that Nabi, Siddiq, Shaheed, Salih. These are the four darajat. And Muhammad وسلم, himself said that uh, Abu Bakr afdulu هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ نَبِي That Abu Bakr is the best of this ummah Except if there is a prophet from within this Muslim Ummah. And yes, of course, if you, you know, the, the, the Quran says it itself that whoever obeys Allah and his prophet can reach these four levels of darajat. And so if we are, you're right, you can become Siddiqeen, you can become Shuhada, and, and that's absolutely fine. I have no qualms with that. But Nabi, no, that nobody so, can reach the place so, of Nabuat. Because so, the Prophet Sallallahu himself and Khatam al nabiyin and even the ayah of the Quran that deals with the seeds of the Prophets and the Ijma'ah and right. the Mutawatir bro, that's somewhere that, that is non-negotiable like but, I, after I, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nobody, yeah. nobody can claim to be a Nabi or a Rasul nobody in fact, like forget Nabi and Rasul you cannot even claim to be a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like forget the stages of, of but, prophethood. But, and if but, you have, you know, made these, uh, sorry? 
how do you explain this verse then that you can obtain the three levels but not the the first one the first one is an nabi you know siddiq the first one is nabi then siddiq then shaheed then saleh so you're saying that the ummah of islam can reach these three levels but not the the first one that's listed an nabi yeah <laughs> But why not? The, the Quran opens this as an in'am. The Quran doesn't say you can reach the stage of Nabi. Where does it say that? It, sa- it says, if you open up the verse, I'm reading it in Arabic and I'm translating it myself. I got Urdu, I can translate it in Urdu as well. Get okay, Quran, just tell me the chapter and verse, sorry. Chapter 4, verse 69. Okay, chapter 4. Verse 69. Verse 69, yeah? And you're yeah. saying in that, if I open that up, yeah. It's going to tell me that you can become a prophet as well, yeah? Yes, within the Muslim Ummah, not a new Sharia, right? And this is what Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read it, I'll read yep. it, because yep. you've told me I brought it up. Yeah, please. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger will be in the company of those blessed by Allah, the prophets, the people of truth, the martyrs, and the righteous. What honorable company. Mm-hmm. It's talking about company, my bro. It doesn't mention okay, anything so- about being a prophet. So, so you're telling me, you're telling me that you can be Siddiq though, right? Or are you gonna be only in the company of the Siddiq? Bro, or, or, well, let, let's deal with one thing first. So, in you, you, you told me to pull up this ayah. I've done so. Right. You said in this ayah, it tells us that we can become a prophet. Right. It, it talks about if you obey Allah and His Messenger, you will be in the company, the company, and then it lists four individuals: the prophets, the truth. The, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous. These are four people you'll be in the company of. So we will, so these, so the Muslim Ummah cannot attain these levels. They can only be with these people. They cannot attain this daraja, right? Is that what you're saying? According to this ayah, it's saying, yeah, that if you obey Allah and His Messenger, you can be with these four. So you cannot. The, in terms of company, it doesn't mention anything about being them. If okay. I say, so, if I so, say, oh, you'll be with um, my next door neighbor. Yeah, it doesn't now mean that you have become my next door neighbor and you're constantly banging on my door saying, can you keep it down upstairs, please? Like you're making a lot of noise and I've got guests downstairs. We, we have to talk in the Arabic, right? Ma'alladheena. An'amallahu ilayk, right? So if you yeah. read the Arabic, you, you agreed, by the way, with me that you can be a Siddiq, you can be a Shaheed, you can be a Salih within the Muslim Ummah. You agreed with me before reading this verse, correct? Yeah, of okay. course. And I'm telling you that that same ayah tells you you can also reach the daraja of Nabuwa. And this is how the past scholars of Islam have also interpreted. Bro, and d- I don't just know tell me where you're getting that from. Where does it say you can become a Nabi? Just tell so, me that bit. I'm not getting okay. that. So, the Quran, so, you know, in Surah Fatiha, we pray for in'am, right? An'amta alayhim. Oh, Allah grant yep. us the favors. Guide us along the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored. Yeah. Yeah. So, get us on the same path, right? And then Allah expands on that in Am, because the same word is used in Am, right? An Amta, and then here is An Am. Oh, this is you. You. You're severely extrapolating, and uh, I, <laughs> you, you're really trying to pick something that's not there, my bro. All you need to do is give me a reference that I can read. I'll do it on the live, and you tell me it says you can become a prophet. Okay. If you if you if you can tell me that, I'll read it. This is a clear indication that you can have four darajat within the Muslim Ummah. That these are it's the not, my bro. You, you can't okay. say clear. So it's cannot, it's an interpretation Abu, you're giving. Sorry. So can we not call Abu Bakr a Siddiq then? Yeah, Abu Bakr okay. was Siddiq because the Prophet called him Siddiq. What, what, it's a what title the, given to him is, by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What is the hadith? What is the hadith? Abu Bakr afdalu hadi al umma illa an yakuna nabiyan. What does that mean? When you just said that he 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 is a Siddiq, and you know he. he He's not going to be a prophet. He didn't say anything about him being a prophet. No, I said Abu Bakr. So I can translate it for you. Abu Bakr afdalu hadhihi al-umma illa an yakuna nabiyan. Or khayru some readers, some says khayru hadhihi al-umma. That Abu Bakr is the best of this umma illa an yakuna yeah. nabiyan. Except if there is a prophet. Now, if you... Right. Consider, if you so he is the prophet. The prophet is the prophet. No. So he's saying that Abu Bakr radiallahu and this is what we believe that after the prophets, the highest in rank is Abu Bakr radiallahu an. So and, that fits with that. And and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself is saying that Abu Bakr has reached the highest daraja that you can reach without becoming a prophet. And then if there is a prophet, then that prophet will be higher in rank than Abu Bakr. Okay. Now like, let me give you one more example. Please. Real quick, if because we're on Khatim al-Nabiyyin, right? Um, yeah. 
you know who the one of the founders of the Deobandi group? I I don't know if you know him, Muhammad Qasim Nanotvi, right? Mm -hmm. Have you have you heard of this individual scholar or no? Yeah. Okay, so he's the founder of the Deobandi group. He died in I think 1880, so before Mirza. He's Ulamad. one of the founders. He's a co-founder. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there were several of them. He there was wrote, two. Okay, two of them. Sure. Um, he wrote. He died in 1880, by the way. So he wrote a pamphlet before Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam, you know, even made a claim of mujaddadiyat, right, or of, of establishment of the Ahmadiyya community. He wrote in his book, right, Tahdhir al Nas. And I, and, I, and I would love for you to explain it to us what he means. If Khatim al Nabiyin means last prophet, then what does he mean when he says that Agar bil farz baade zamane nabawi, koi nabi pada ho. So, khatam, and I'm paraphrasing here. Khatamiyat me, jo khatamiyat, jo Rasulullah sallam ki khatamiyat hai, us pe koi haraj nahi ho. There, there's no, he will still remain khatam in Nabihin. Agar bil farz, baadai zamanai nabawi Muhammad, nabawi Muhammad me. Agar Bro, let, let, me, let me tell you one thing. I've, I've noticed there's a, there's a trend in our discussion. Like each time something gets posited, you give me quotes of certain scholars. Yeah, uh, uh, let me just reiterate that we have our authentic sources. That's what we go by. Yeah, okay. and yeah. authentic sources cannot compare with a saying of an individual, which number one depends on context, number two depends on the translation, and number three, I would say it depends on a number of things. Yeah, yeah. and each one of those quotes will need to be taken in context of what was he talking about? What would, did he mean? Yeah. Uh, what, you, you cannot, know, my bro, you cannot take Akida from a saying of a individual right. in India. Yeah, you said, right. what was his name? Qasim Nanotu, yeah? Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying is, this is what I'm saying is, today's Barelvis, today's Barelvis, who are the opponents of Deobandis, do takfir of Deobandis and say, look, your founder, Muhammad Qasim Nanotvi, wrote this in his book. You guys are kafir, you guys are kharij al-Islam. And this is the issue that we have, right? You guys say that Ahmadiyya invented something new out of nowhere, out of thin air. No, the past ulama have made this interpretation in the past. Um, Abdul, Which uh, past Abdul, ulama made it? Abdul Abdul Wahab, oh, you have named one. Abdul Wahab al-Sha'rani. Okay, and you can say... What did he Abdul say? Wahab? Huh? What did he say? He said the same thing. He said Khatam al nabiyin doesn't mean that a new prophet cannot come from within the Muslim ummah. He said Khatim and Nabiyin means that he's that brought... goes against the main Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And... My bro, anybody can say that. But it is a clear doctrine of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that no Prophet will come. And you can give me obscure quotes or, or things that, like for example, when I gave you that quote, you said, oh, it was actually taken um, from the Bible and sure. it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was rad of that. So bro, like... I'm sure some of these quotes do exist and, yeah, and, and kudos to that individual but I'm sorry that does not okay, uh, you, that's not a hujja for the ummah now to say that because this scholar has said this now suddenly we're going to accept that there yeah. can be another prophet when the prophet himself said ana khatamun nabiyin I am the last prophet he's the seal of the prophets and I'm sorry my bro like if the prophet said that that should be okay, enough so, for anybody. Like for you to tell me this ayah, whoever obeys Allah and his messenger will be in the company of those blessed by Allah, the prophets, the, Arabic, people of truth, the martyrs and the righteous. From this ayah, you're telling me that from this ayah, you can deduce that you can become Nabi. Like that's a very far-fetched conclusion you've drawn you, from this. We, we both came to the conclusion that you can be three of these darajat. You're telling me you cannot be the fourth one. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm okay. saying. And that's and, what I have been saying. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, past ulama, and we as the Ahmadiyya community interpret this verse to mean that you can have the darajah of Nabuwa as well. But that doesn't contradict Muhammad وسلم, being Khatim al Nabiyin. Because he is. Khatim okay, this is an interesting point. Uh, let me just probe you on this. So, so you said sure. that there can be another prophet after the prophet. Wasalam, but yeah. the prophet himself was the last of the prophets. Khatim and Nabiyin means the seal of the prophets. And I think this is where, you know, your viewers can maybe get some insight into this, you know. This is where Ahmadis get attacked a lot. Khatama, so Khatam, right, is a ring that you can say in the Arabic, Khatam, right? Oh, well, was that the middle finger there, bro? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> so ring, ring finger, ring finger. Khatam, <laughs> okay. I'm trying to flip you off. Khatam is a ring in the Arabic language. And Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to, right, 
himself put a stamp of approval, right, for different letters that he would send to dignitaries with his signature on it, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. And that would be the khatam that he would use, the ring that he would use. And that's what khatam al nabiyin means, that he, he marks the seal. He is the seal of all prophets. He gives the approval for all prophets, that he is the king of all prophets. Because if you read that Bro, verse... That, that tafsir, I haven't come across in a single, oh, uh, not a single mufassir, Qurtubi, Ibn Kathir, none of these individuals have made that. It, it, uh, who, who's made that? Which Mufassir, can you tell me, has said that seal of the prophets actually refers to, you said a ring, and what did you say after khatim, that? Khatim means ring, right, in the Arabic language. Yes. That's the meaning of the word, actually. It doesn't mean... So what, what, what are you going to say, Khatam and Nabin, the, the word Khatam means here? Khatam means seal of the prophets, and we're talking about seal because people think it's... In terms of a ring, so he's, yeah. he's the seal from the ring of the prophets. Meaning that any... The seal of approval. You know how you get a letter. I mean, you live in the UK, but yeah, but okay. A, and you, I've understood what you've said. I, I understand you get the, the seal. seal of a, the seal. Yeah, but how would you put it, that in a sentence? I am the seal from a ring of approval of of the prophets. I I am the seal of the prophets. Meaning, any prophethood that negate no prophethood can negate my prophethood. Meaning, all prophethoods get approval for my seal, my ring. Right? I bear right. the mark of Nabuwa. And that's what Mirza Ghulam Ahmad said, that my Nabuwa is only in ita'a, in complete obedience to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's what this verse says. Well, when did the Prophet ever give him approval? I, I, and there's, that's, that's what he said in hadith, right? So that's, this is where we have the ikhtilaf, right? This, just to understand from the Ahmadiyya perspective, why do we stress on the fact that Isa Alayhi Salam has passed away and is not coming back? Because there's a hadith that say that there's a Isa ibn Maryam in the latter days, right? And that Isa ibn Maryam is different than the Isa ibn Maryam that passed away 2,000 years ago approximately, right? He passed away a natural death. He's not coming back, right? When Isa ibn Maryam is referred to in the Sorry, my bro. Days, we're going to go on a tangent again. Just to reiterate my question, which was, um, uh, who, when did the Prophet allow right. and... Yeah, uh, because permit said, Mirza Qadiani, where that, did he permit that? Because surely you'd be mentioned by name, isn't it? I mean, no, even and, the Bible, yeah, the word Muhammadim exists. Yeah, and, and, and so you know, the Jews at the time of Muhammad وسلم, also, right? They said, you know, some of the prophecies are there, but it should have been more clear. It should have been more clear that he would be born in Mecca in this certain age to this certain father to this certain mother in this Qariya. In this, they have, yeah. So many allegations that, you know, I can't believe this because it wasn't clear enough for me. It will never become clear enough until you want to search search for the truth. So just to give you, where does it say that a prophet can come from within the Muslim ummah? Because Muhammad... No, no, where, where did the where prophet did, say yeah, where, that Mirza exactly. Qadian will come after him? Yes. And that he is talking, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about a Messiah to come in the latter days. That will resemble Isa ibn Maryam and he will be a prophet. Nabiullah, he called him Nabiullah in Sahih Muslim four times. He also said, That there is no prophet between me and him and he will surely come. Right? And he's talking about the latter day Messiah. This is why Isa ibn Maryam is a topic that we have to discuss. Because if Isa al Islam is proven to have died a natural death, then who is this latter day Messiah? Sahih Bukhari mentions there's two there's two Isa ibn so because there's a question of so, sorry i'm going to let you finish because maybe yeah. you're going to answer yeah. it so there's two Isa ibn Maryam, there's two messiahs that are mentioned in bukhari in, in, if you read sahih bukhari and i don't have the exact number there's two there's two messiahs mentioned one is Isa ibn Maryam with curly hair and a red complexion as if he's just gotten out of a hot shower that's what bukhari says right then the very next hadith talks about an Isa ibn Maryam that is doing tawaf around the kaaba at the time of the Dajjal. And Muhammad So you're saying the prophecies of Isa is actually Mirza, yeah? This, the second one, yes. The second one. And then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees another Isa and he sees him doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't recognize this individual and then asks, this is the vision, by the way, this is a dream. He asks, who but is in this? In his narrations, this Isa is mentioned though, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And he asks, who is this? And he's told Isa ibn But Mar his name is Mirza though. He, not even yeah. one, he's got a few names, Mirza, Ghulam, Ahmad, Qadiani. Maybe right. even if one of them were Isa, I mean, you, I you can so, kind of understand. And this, this is what I'm trying to tell you is, 
that he was given the title of Isa ibn Maryam. And why was he given the title? Because of the utmost similarity. Because Isa was his name. No. But Isa but, alayhi salam, the Prophet Isa, Isa was his name, isn't it? No, his name is not Isa. It was the similarities. Can I give you one more example? Can I give you one so more example? So what was his real name then? His name was Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Who's, who's no, sorry, sorry. No, I'm, I'm talking about the Prophet. You know, Isa oh, alayhi salam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isa alayhi salam. Yeah. yeah, that was his name. But the, the okay. Messiah, the Messiah to come from within the Muslim Ummah, the yeah. Mahdi, the Mahdi, he was given title. Also the Prophet, he, but bro, if it's this was like, going to be such a contentious issue, why would the Prophet give him the name of a Prophet whilst he's meaning some, uh, somebody else? Like that's deceptive, isn't it? It's not deceptive because the Quran does the same thing, right? The Quran says, the Quran says, and the Quran is mubin, right? It's clear that it, that we are sending you... Well, there's certain uh, ayats in the Quran are mutashabihat, so we can't say the Quran is... Yeah. I mean, okay, the Quran is saying, right, that we are sending you a prophet as we sent Pharaoh a prophet. That how, as we sent Pharaoh a prophet, we sent you as a prophet. So there's a complete tashabuh, there's a complete similarity between the Musa alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. They both, they both brought sharia, right? They both brought Allah. Musa brought the Torah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam brought the Quran. Then 13th century... I just, can't get my, I just can't get my head around the fact that so the Prophet was talking about Isa, but you're saying he, he said I, Isa, but he actually meant Mirza. If I give you a finish the real quick, so Isa alayhi, so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam are likened to each other in the Quran and you cannot deny that. It says Isa and sorry who? Musa alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam are likened to each other by the Quran. We are sending you a prophet just as we sent Moses a prophet or a Fir'aun a prophet, right? Meaning Moses. That, that we are sending you a prophet, meaning you people. If I say I'm going to send you a basket like I sent somebody else yeah. a basket, that doesn't mean you're both similar there, there there's a let me if i can finish both of these sure sure sorry sorry if both of these both of these individuals musa alayhi salam and muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam brought the sharia then 13 centuries pass musa alayhi salam talks about a mujaddid a messiah to come within the ummah to fix the muslim the, the jewish ummah right and of course the jews reject him and that was isa ibn maryam that individual came did his work he passed away he did what he could right and then unfortunately his followers after him made him a god, right? Now we, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is prescribing, and you know the hadith, that this, mus, this ummah will do exactly what the past the Jewish ummah did, right? Up to, they will make the same mistakes, they will do the same as one, as one sandal copies another sandal. That's how this Muslim ummah will resemble the Jewish ummah. Now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is talking about a Latter-day Messiah, who is to do 13 centuries later as well? Who is going to come and do the same thing that Isa ibn Maryam did? The same, the mujaddidiyat, the, the tarbiyah, the, the revolution from within the Muslim ummah. That is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that is why Muhammad Just, just to mention one point here, when Isa alayhi salam comes, um, it, there's like, um, there'll be wealth. Do, do you guys believe this? That yeah, wealth and, will and, be and, yeah, and, everywhere, and there'll be peace. Yeah. Right. And, and of course, these are the same, if you look at the same allegations that the Jews raised against Isa al Islam, these are the same allegations that are being raised against Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, that where is the wealth that he distributed, right? And the wealth is a Ruhani Khaza'in, if you know what that means in Urdu. The Ruhani Khaza'in means the spiritual treasures. Prophets do not come and give physical wealth. And the Quran says as this as well. Didn't, like, didn't Mirza Qadiani leave inheritance behind for his family though? Sure. I don't, I don't you know just said that uh, prophets no, don't leave no, material things behind, and you just said Mirza did leave no, stuff for I'm, his family. What I'm talking about is you're referring to hadith that Yafid al Ma hatta la yakbaluhu ahad that he will so, give. So prophets don't leave inheritance. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, what I'm trying to say is you are bringing up Yafid al Ma that he will spread wealth to the point that no one will accept it. That's what you're trying to accept. You're, you're giving the hadith, right? What I'm saying is that that spiritual wealth that Mirza Ulam Ahmad or any individual leaves the prophets leave behind is spiritual wealth and if you read the books of ruhani khazain yeah that's that's where i was saying when you said spiritual wealth yeah. that's what they leave behind i agree with you and yeah, they don't yeah, prophets do not leave behind material wealth but in ruhani khazain as you um mentioned he i mean it's clearly mentioned that he has left behind um, I, I, don't, I don't know where if that's is that a principle that prophets cannot leave behind any wealth oh yeah i don't know it's, i, it's I don't know where that's written where is it written in the Quran that yeah. prophets cannot leave? Let, let me find it. 
No, where is it written in the Quran that prophets cannot leave behind? I'll tell you. Anything? I'll tell you. Okay. I'll tell you. Um, and by the I'll way, I have, the to, I have about five minutes because I have to go pray as well. So if okay. You can, if, oh, where, where are you speaking from? Are you are you in England? In the U.S. U.S. Oh, okay. Oh, so you haven't prayed Isha yet? No, it's about to be Maghrib time. Yeah, sorry, you were saying, carry on? It's about to be Maghrib time. Maghrib. I saw, oh, Maghrib time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is a hadith in Bukhari, yeah? <laughs> when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, he left neither a dinar nor a dirham, nor a male slave, nor a female slave, nor anything else except his white mule, his weapon, and a piece of khaybar, uh, which he had given to charity. Uh, so there's that. Okay, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, again, this is in Bukhari, we prophets do not leave anything as inheritance. Whatever we leave is charity. Okay, and I can look at that and answer you. I do not know this particular allegation, and I, I'm glad you brought it for me, and I can search it up for you and respond to you. I do but there's, know there's one thing I want to say as well. Like, please don't take what I'm saying as allegations. Like, th okay. these are... No, it's okay. uh, it's one thing I will say, yeah, just just watch my videos as well, and then watch my previous videos, and okay. see because I've done videos like you know Anub Goswami, he's like a, a TV news anchor in India. No, I don't know who that is. So he he's like you know the Muslims are being oppressed in India, isn't right. it, under the Modi right. government? Right. Yeah, so yeah. he is like he's the TV anchor of Republic TV, and he is just just rough around the edges, very rude, and spreading a lot of hate. So he's the guy that I would say that I roasted. If you if you actually check after we've uh, you know finished uh, the the chat, yeah. check those two videos and actually see that yes the memes that's where the comedy is coming from. But in terms of what I've actually said, yeah. I'm not being rude. Like in fact, you know that with Tichi Tichi, what people can say about Tichi Tichi and what people right. can say about this. But I've just merely given the reference. I've mentioned the point, and then I've moved on. And I think it's important that we know the context of each of those things. And, if and that's absolutely fine. And, and, I'm, uh, and to be honest, like I've been with a teacher who has all of the, the books of Rouhani Khazain. In fact, anytime he's spoken, he has the book in front of him. So sure. references for me, like even the stuff that I've mentioned, my bro, it's not that they've been taken out of context. This is, uh, it's, I've seen that it's become a very kind of common you know, quote unquote rebuttal, but I don't think it's a valid rebuttal because even like you were saying about Mirza saying that he saw a vision, like even in that, I I didn't you know think you know, that, that was a satisfactory answer just because Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani has said it. That doesn't necessitate. I'll give you an example. It's a I'll just get a mother. What a mother says to a child when a child says, "Oh, so and so did it." The mother, a typical mother, answer is, "If he jumps off a mountain, are you going to do the same?" You know what I'm saying? What saying? So this is like a it's some other thing. I'm not and, saying it as as a little know, thing, but what I'm saying, my bro, is just because an, a follower of the Prophet ﷺ has done something that does not become hujja and that cannot become our aqidah. And, and that's all I'm asking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just real quick, and I want to real quick because you said a couple things, right? One thing is there's nothing of aqidah that we're driving from this vision. It doesn't change aqidah at all. It's a vision that he had. It doesn't add anything to the sharia ah of islam right it's a vision at the end of the day muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to us went to jannah in i'll a tell you why it does sorry i jumped in again because after i mentioned these two quotes he then goes i saw in a vision that i am god then i believed it to be so so bro when you've got believed it to be so that is a matter of akida no we we do not he did not if, and then and then I responded to you, I rebuttaled to you that Abul Kalam Azad is saying that he wrote the best literature on Tawheed that he's ever read, right? So this is individuals. And, and just to go back to in, in a couple of minutes here, you said, why am I quoting the scholars at the time of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad before his claim? You know, one of you, Batalvi, um, Abul Kalam Azad, what, maybe they made some quotes here and there. The thing is the Prophet... No, no, sorry. I didn't say they, they made quotes here and there. I said that in order to take somebody's quote and uh, to do justice to it, context uh, of that quote is needed. That, that's why I said we, we We would appreciate the same thing as well. You know, context of that particular, whatever quote that you're bringing up. But the point that I'm making here is 
And you know what? It's it's interesting that you mentioned that. If I'll I'll honor what you said. The next time I do, I will give the photocopy of the full page. Do you think that's fair if I give the photocopy of the full page? Because you know, the full, you asked me about Isa alayhi salam being disrespected in you know whatever reference, and I gave you what he's talking about. He didn't mention yeah. it on that page, but it's very clear if you read two pages beforehand of what he's talking about. He's addressing the Christians and he's telling them that this is what your Bible says about Jesus. So that's yeah. not going to be on that page. It's not. But if you are if you're honest to your viewers and you let them know that hey, this is when Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is addressing. the christians and telling them that this is what's written in the bible with regards to isa alayhi salam then that's being very honest that okay he's not being disrespectful because he himself later on says the quran is completely contra- contrary and gives isa alayhi salam and his mother a very high status how about if you so can- then if i was to make a video and if i was to mention that then you're right i will need to give the context of the entire chapter and if and if i am to make that point then that is something that i will have to do so okay. i'll honor that And I, and I would really appreciate that. And at the same time, if I send you a quote where he explains the same allegation that you're raising, or the point that you're raising, that he disrespected, disrespected Naudu Billah Isa Ibn Maryam, Naudu Billah, you will have to also honor what he explains. And he says that what he holds Isa Ibn Maryam as in his heart, what he thought himself of Isa Ibn Maryam. Because do not ignore those quotes, right? If we take some quotes and ignore the other ones, then we're not doing justice to him. I'll give you an example. Let's just say if I if I say if I praise you ten times, and in those ten times, my bro, I in, in one of the lines is extreme insult to your mother. Then I'm sorry, but the way human psychology works I, is it focuses on that one negative thing. He didn't. He didn't because by him. nature, that's what it is, isn't it? He didn't. He didn't disrespect him, and I and I. I think if you were to read the context of of the yeah, whole, quote, I I would disagree with that because I've come across many many places sure. in which that has and happened, and we can we can agree to disagree here. And if I was to ever talk about that, then I obviously yeah. can bring just, new thoughts. And just to, just to give one final point is, and obviously you can feel free to speak afterwards as well. But you know what is important to realize is that you have to study the life of that individual before they make the claim. You know, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought the whole Quraysh before he claimed to be prophet. He brought the he brought the whole Quraysh and said, "If I told you there's an army behind this Jabal, would you would you believe me?" And they said, "Yes, of course. You're Al Amin. You're a Sadiq. You're 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 a truthful person." And he said, "Okay, well, I have been sent by Allah." They said, "No, no, no, no. We will not believe in you. You know, we cannot agree that you're a truthful person." So that is why I'm bringing up scholars before Mirza Ghulam, before Mirza Ghulam Ahmad makes his claim. They they. They all praise him, and they say this individual has has no one has ever written a book. I'll I'll calendar. compare that because that's a very interesting thing that and, you and said. Is, hey, quick, the Prophet is on a. One quick verse from the Quran. One quick verse from yeah. the Quran. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Laqad laqad uh, laqad labithu fiqum umara." That I have lived amongst you a lifetime. Why do you not look at the lifetime before I made my claim to know who I am? So this is why I I want to. Bro, say, how many minutes you got left? Uh, how many minutes you got left? Two minutes. You can make your final claim. Just I'll make my one more sentence, and that's it. And then you can say what you have. Laqad labithu fiqum umara. That's why I'm quoting these scholars from before the time of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam's claim to being a prophet, claim to being the the Mahdi and the Messiah, because all of these ulama respected him. Why am I Why am I saying that? Is because you have to study the life before as well, because afterwards everyone will change, and that's what the Quran says. Wa ma'ya tihim al Rasul illa kanu bihi yastahzun. That never have we sent a messenger or a person. With a message that you know doesn't get made fun of, of, of made fun of, of or ridiculed. Well, bro, let's just say if there's a student at school and he's been getting straight A's, but one day he does something, and I'm not gonna say what he does because then people will accuse me of comparing that child to Mirza Kadiani. But let's just say he does something really wrong, very really crude, and he gets expelled. No religious institution will say, "Oh, let's look at what he, uh, how he was before." If you've done something outlandish, it will wipe out, and it has to overrule what's happened before. So, if somebody is a good person, that's right. fine. Kudos to that person. But if that person now starts claiming to be prophethood, I'm sorry, that and person's credibility is not acceptable. I, I, you cannot take that person seriously because they have come. And they have gone against a fundamental aqid of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaa. So everything that you've said beforehand, uh, and that's very good. I'm sure he was a very good individual. Everything was hunky dory. But 
when he claimed to be prophethood, I'm sorry, that wipes out what he did beforehand because that's a very serious claim. And unfortunately and sadly, his books, because with the Prophet ﷺ, we can then analyze his revelation and what he was given. If uh, And we cannot find any contradictions or flaws in it. However, if you look at Ruhani Khazain, it's riddled with inconsistencies. It's riddled with rude language. It's riddled with inaccuracies. I, and that's why I feel that this comparison that you've made is inaccurate. But somebody commented in the comments and said, your recitation um, is is actually, uh, you, you're reciting better than your the the, and, the current quote unquote so, Khalifa and, and, Mirza Masroof. That was one question I wanted to ask before we leave that. Uh, what's how comes he's making like basic recitation mistakes? That was a genuine question I had. This is the this is the issue, right? That the Muslim Ummah, you know, and and the Quran says, "Qiradatan khasi'in," right? Takunu qiradatan khasi'in. This is what the Jews were described as in the Quran, right? Become apes, right? And obviously, what does apes do? What do apes do? They just do taqlid, right? All they have is a zahir, and they don't have any batin. So if an individual makes a mistake in the Qira'a, Muhammad Hijab, and if you can go on YouTube, right? Muhammad Hijab has made... Sorry, bro, I'm conscious of your time. Uh, yeah. Because I was, that was genuinely a praise of you that your recitation is good, but the current quote-unquote Khalifa, if an, if an he's made basic mistakes in Surah Fatiha. Why an, is his uh, recitation the, making major mistakes if he's the current uh, Khalifa? You know, Bilal, Bilal radiallahu anhu, was yeah, bro, Bilal radiallahu anh was alive at the time of the Prophet sallallahu and the Prophet made allowance for Bilal. Yeah, after, after Sahabas, there's nobody that can change uh, Look, Arabic we're not, we're not and will be anything. endorsed, if, especially if, if they're claiming to be the leader of the Muslims. If, if you make a mistake in recitation, it should not be counted against you because according to Muhammad Hijab, even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made mistakes in recitation. According to him, I'm not quoting him. I'm just Muhammad saying, Hijab did not say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made mistakes in recitation. He, yes, he, he hasn't said we'll that. You, we'll show you the video. I'll show you the video. Um, Muhammad anyway, Hijab, this is not a, a point that Muhammad Hijab holds. And even if he did, who the hell is Muhammad Hijab? Okay. When, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know, I, like, I, again, I, it's that Muhammad I'm Hijab, he said some funky business here. I mean, he told me that he doesn't like the drink that I gave him. I know that's wrong because I'm really good at making that drink. So that was clearly a lie. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a, I'm a good cook when it comes to these things. But bro, I, I really want to hone in because because this point that you made, I have read, I have read the people saying, oh, Bilal made that mistake. And oh, if you try your best uh, and you still get it wrong. But this is a leader of the Muslims who is claiming to be the Khalifa. His Arabic needs to be on point. And why is he making fundamental mistakes in Surah Fatiha? He listen, man. The the nutq, right? The lehja, the al al arabi the, the the pronunciation is not gonna be what's gonna get you in jannah or what's gonna get you closer to Allah. What's gonna get, bro makhraj? If you're mispronouncing the Quran the and you and you're the leader of the Muslims. And you're deliberately reading it wrong it's, when you it's know it's wrong. He should move somebody else forward. Then it's not deliberately. It's not deliberately deliberately reading it incorrectly. This is his. This is what he's read the Quran as. And there is no. Fault. That doesn't make it right, my bro. There's no fault. You cannot fault an individual. And by the way, bro, it's wrong. There's certain letters he was pronouncing incorrectly. You cannot it changes the meaning. You cannot fault an individual for having an accent in reciting the Quran in Arabic. By the way, and by the way, I have to go. Oh, that's not an accent. It's pronounced, bro, I know people that have, uh, that are proficient with Urdu. This, they do this, have an accent. Bro, this, you can learn. This does not, this does not, it's not fault if, you know, the, the real thing is, la yamassuhu illa al-mutahharun, that only the purified people can learn the Quran and, and understand its interpretation. I challenge you, if you think that, Mir, that Mirza Masroor Ahmad, ayyullahu allahu ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz, does not know the Quran and he's a Muslim leader, bring any verse of the Quran and he will explain it better than anyone on the planet earth. Bro, I'm not talking about explanation. And, I'm and talking about reading. That's what matters, right? al Batin matters. Reading first, bro. You have to first be able to read matters. it and then explain it. If so a person is, is inaccurately reading it, that means they have not grasped Arabic properly. And if you yeah. haven't grasped Arabic properly, bro, then your explanation is now dubious. 
and it's uh, it's no, suspect no, no, no. to be honest. Listen, la, it does. The Quran does not say la yamusuhu illa al-Arab, right? You know what that means, right? Uh, ta, 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 do you even speak Arabic, brother? I, I'm not, I'm just saying. Bro, proceed, proceed. Like the Quran says, la yamusuhu illa al-Mutaqabbir. Bro, I can ask the same thing to you, Khalifa. To be it honest, I mean, in fact, that's <laughs> I mean, that's know, what I've been asking. The Quran says, la yamusuhu illa al-Mutaqabbirun, that only the purified can touch it, meaning learn its meanings. It does not say لا يمسوه إلا العرب الذي ينطق اللغة العربية. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "I have come to recite. I have come to recite the verses. So okay. if that's the first thing that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says, and uh, the, a, a person that claims to be the leader of the Muslims, he can't read. He can't read properly because of an accent. Uh, it, uh, in fact, I'm sorry, but عين and a uh, that's not accent. You know, in the, fact, if, in Arabic, قلب Qaf and Kalb, they're two totally different meanings. Brother, yeah, one I, is heart, one is dog. Qaf and Kalb. It makes a big difference, if, my bro. So if, if this individual also claims to be such, and you're saying because it's an accent, then you're telling me Bilal radiallahu anhu. Yeah, Sorry, it, Bilal was sanctioned by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away, you cannot give me a single individual. Who read the Quran with that proper pronunciation that was given the stamp of approval by the Ummah? Can you give me a single one? I, what I'm saying is that there's no you cannot fault an individual for not pronouncing a per particular. You, you can know, if they claim to be to. the leader of the Muslims. You're right if it was an average individual, like somebody that's saying, that's "Oh, well, it was a new Muslim." That's what I'm but asking. if it's the, the Quran says, "La yamusuhu illa al-mutahharun," and I'm challenging challenging you. If you think that Mirza Masur Ahmad does not understand the Quran, that's the essence of the Muslim. Bro, you can challenge me on something. Else. You're challenging me on something else. Challenge me that I challenge you that Mirza Masur can read the Quran properly. That's that's what the challenge would make sense. Mirza Masur Ahmad, ayyadhu Allahu Taala bi nasrihi al Aziz, is the leader of the Muslim Ummah, whether they like it or not. He understands the Quran. He is the most purified individual to be understanding of the Quran. Is he half is of the Quran? Is he memorized the Quran? That's what I'm saying again. لا يمسوه إلا المطهرون. Bro, I'm just asking. I'm just. I'm curious. He's not. He's not. But that does not. The, okay. the first. The first Khalifa was. The third Khalifa was. You do not necessarily be. You have to be in Hafiz. You have to be from. I didn't Arab. say that. I just asked. Yeah. Is he Hafiz? He's not. And and by the way, have I, you come across any Qadiani that's a Hafiz of the Quran? I just told you the first Khalifa, the third Khalifa were both. Not alive family. at this moment in time. There's because we can't check the recitation of we, those people, isn't we it? Have the, we have the Hifth Qul in various places of the world, in Canada even, in, in Nigeria, Ghana, everywhere, Pakistan. We have Hufad everywhere. And this is, the, this is the thing I think the Muslim Ummah forgets is that Allah chooses who he wants to bless. Allah chooses. It does not matter what they look like from the outside, what their nutqa is, what their lahja is, what their... What their particular? But how did Allah choose this guy, though? Can you just explain that? I don't understand. By the way, I have I have to really go. Um, why did Allah choose this individual? He was the most humble of the humble. If you look at his life, that's what I'm saying. Is look at his life. Ten ten years before Khilafa, he spent nine years in Ghana, in Ghana, serving the poor, serving the destitute. He was the first individual to be able to actually grow corn, which has revolutionized the agriculture within the Ghanaian economy. He was a principal. He lived in a mere like hut, basically, and he used to walk miles to get water back. This is the. Well, there are people that have created much more advanced ways of giving this, food to poor this, people. That doesn't mean that they are now qualified to no, become a Khalifa. I, that's what I'm saying is this is the, the, the journey that he undertook. We don't know. It was his personal journey with Allah and Allah chose him to put him as Khalifa. And Alhamdulillah. Where, where did we, is this written somewhere? Can we test this uh, okay. hypothesis I, I of yours? Ask you, I can ask you the same. I mean, you know, people, na'udhu billah, raise allegations against Abu Bakr. Um, you know, the Shia and, and that's fine. We can and, come to those accusations. But no, my but, question is that can we test this point that Allah has selected him to be a Khalifa? Of course, it, there's numerous people when the Khalifa al-Rabi rahimahullah passed away, numerous people, actually even before that, numerous people saw in dreams that he was going to be the Khalifa. Numerous people were told beforehand, even the one he would be the dreams. Khalifa. Come on, and, man. And, and, do better than that. And, and, and then another thing is, and another thing is, no, I saw in a dream but, that I was Batman. I mean, Mirza come Ghulam. on, I can't start jumping from building to building looking for the Joker. Similarly, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad received the revelation was in Ma'aka Ya Masroor. 
and later on he became and Mirza and Mirza Masrur is of his progeny as well, and he became a Khalifa, right? And this is a Bro, on the level on the level. Do you honestly think that this is this a rigorous answer that you're giving me? You've quoted number one a dream. No, not one dream. Hundreds of dreams, hundreds of pre people. Oh, hundreds of come on, bro! Like and, you can't base a Khalifa upon hundreds of dreams. And and this and he was elected with a Majlis Shura. And this is, I think, I mean, obviously, you can always re people raise allegations against Uthman and Ali, and you know why? How come he's the Khalifa? You know, Zubair and, and they Tanha. do, and those and allegations Zubair, are answered, Zubair and then and they Tanha. stop. And no. my bro, the, uh, the response never starts with can the you, person saw can, hundreds of dreams. Can you tell me Zubair, Zubair, who was a Sahabi of, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not do bay'ah at the hands of Ali radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, illa karhan, right? Except that he was made, he was dragged to do bay'ah at the hands of Ali. Can you say, bro, can you, do you can't compare that to hundreds of people seeing dreams. Like no, here, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, hundreds of people seeing dreams. That was the first thing that you said, and now you've compared it with no, oh, he was dragged me, to give me, Why did Allah choose, or how did Allah choose him? How did you know? How is it possible? Yeah, I'm saying, how can we test that? And you've told me hundreds of dreams. Number one, we can't test that. You can, What's the other thing that we can test? The entire Ahmadiyya com community does bayah at his hands every year. But I'll give you an example. Yeah, if a if a Christian comes to us, asks about the authenticity of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we can't say, oh, because it's going to be a circular argument. Oh, oh, this bloke also believes in the Prophet. That bloke also believes the Prophet. Okay, who are those two? Are they Muslim? So, well, can you give me anything else? And that's why the sadaqat, the truthfulness uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was determined actually from his adversaries, people that didn't believe in him. Yeah. In yeah. fact, when he was there and um, Abu Sufyan actually saw and he was not a Muslim at that time and he saw how the companions defended the Prophet ﷺ, and he saw the truthfulness of the companions okay. and of the Prophet. ﷺ. So, bro, the, you know, there, the, the, and this, Saudi, this, the Ahmadiyya community yeah. coming together, seeing hundreds of dreams and electing a caliph no, the, cannot this, now be imposed this, upon, uh, what was it about? Uh, that's was funny. it eight eight million eight, eight was about well, sorry one point six to one point eight billion Muslims worldwide? I'm not saying go believe in a dream that somebody else had. That's why you have to do your own journey and see. Hey, is this the truth from Allah or not? And this is how Allah has made it, bro. I honestly, wallahi, I have, and it's not, bro. Qadianiyat, uh, Ahmadiyat, whatever you want to call it, is not the truth. If that, and I implore you to also, you know, even when this goes down, I understand, bro. There are people watching you and you're representing, but honestly, like quoting Sufi Shuyu and by the quoting, way, I am, I am a. I am not, I am a member of the Ahmadi community, but that does not mean I'm representing them officially, just to be out there, right? I am not an official representative of the Khalifa. I'm just a humble servant, and I have not been put into this spot to, you know, represent the Ahmadiyya community. I Who would you say you're the servant of? Me. Yeah. I'm a servant of Allah and His Rasul, and then... Ulul Amri Minkum, and that's for me is Mirza Masubur Ahmad, who is the Khalifa, who Allah has put in place. By the way, I have to go and do, I have to go do uh, prayers before I run out of time. I understand. And, and I appreciate your, you know, this discussion. We went through a myriad of we topics, did. Um, we did. and I think at the end of the day, like, you know, we as Ahmadis, un we are misunderstood on multiple levels. And um, if there's a manner in which we can have a platform... Bro, I'm, I'm going to be honest, like you guys are misunderstood and I don't think your responses do, uh, and, you know, and, and make that I don't, I don't any think, easier. I don't think if it's for you, you know, people, when we, when people have a... But I have to say, bro, I really do appreciate the time that you've given. You went off, you came back on, you given your time. time as well. Yeah. And you know what, bro, I'm, I'm really thankful and appreciative to you as well. Because I think what we've done at the very least is shown that we can have a interesting and, dialogue. And we can respect yeah. we can respect each other to be honest. Even yeah. though we may not agree with each other's points and you know what I'm saying, but um we, we don't need to kind of use um profanities and uh, stuff yeah, like that. For sure. And I appreciate the conversation. I do have to go, but uh, of course, of course, a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, perhaps we can continue this at another at a later date. Um, I, I would really like that. I would really like that.